YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Two Point Campus Strategy and Tactics Quick Tip. So today we're going to start on the first of our 17 class series on deep dives, where we go extensively into each of the individual classes, talk about the best way to build their rooms, the best way to structure the classes, tips and tricks related to having the class, and how they might fit into your campus on a broader spectrum and what other classes they play well with. So today Today's first entry is going to be Money Wangling, one of the best classes for, as the name implies, making money in the early game. Let me explain why this is such a good starter class. Going into the classes here, Money Wangling is a two-year program that takes 20 course points to get online, so not too hard. It attracts only the Pasho student type, which is actually a rather important aspect of it. Poshos are really good in the early game. They give you money. Early game, unless you're playing creative like I am here, early game money is typically very tight. So getting more money more quickly is, well, the name of the game. It's also the highest base tuition of all the two-year schools. Obviously, there are plenty of three- and four-year classes that have higher bases, but I took, for a two-year one, this pays pretty darn well. So the initial entry is, is 20, then 15, another 20, 25, and whatnot. The ideal level to get money wangling to is level three in my honest opinion. This gives you a couple of different perks by getting it to level three. So level three allows you to get 20 applicants base. The ideal class size for money wangling is not actually 20 applicants, it's 16. 16 will allow the class to be perfectly self-contained. Allow me to explain. So when it comes to getting yourself down to a class size of 16, there's two different ways that you can do it and you can combine them. You could just lower the student intake and doing so boosts your learning rate. And since this is a hard category class, getting a little extra learning rate in there wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, especially once you see how poshos work. On the flip side, if you wanted to gouge them a little bit more directly, you could pump up the tuition fees to artificially lower the applications and then just make sure you're taking in 16. You won't get as big of a learning boost here, but it's another way to get more money out of your students. Either way would work. It depends on what you're what you're looking for. Because of the way the poshos work, I would actually recommend putting it down to normal and then just doing this because the learning rate bonus is a little bit more powerful in the hands of the poshos, which I will demonstrate later in this video. Now, what do I mean by a perfectly self-contained class? Well, when you are laying down the rooms here, you have you, uh, once you get up to two years of classes, each they have three classes of lecture hall and three classes in of computer room. Because you're taking in 16 students, each of these are essentially doubled. Two units of lecture, two units of lecture, two units of lecture. That's a total of six units of lecture hall, which is exactly the capacity of one lecture hall. You also have six units of computer room classes, exactly the capacity for a computer room. So you can contain and, and entertain an entire two year, 16 student per year, 32 in total, money wangling class with just one lecture room and one computer room. That's it. That's very small in terms of footprints and building of new things and very efficient use of your teachers. You'd only need two money wangling teachers to keep all of those classes, well, taught. So it's extremely efficient and cost effective in that manner. So let's talk about the computer room specifically for money wangling, because money wangling is not the only classroom that uses the computer room, but the computer room, the way the money wangling uses the computer room, there's a few specific objects that they want for their assignments. First off, the computer lab, no reason to build it any bigger than the bare minimum four by four. Door on the side here, you have to put down a whiteboard, even though it's not used for or homework. Now, interesting little thing here. So the game requires some form of a computer and the required stats here say analog computer. So most people just slap down an analog computer. That analog computer will fulfill the build conditions of the room, but in reality, the room is buildable with any of the computers. The supercomputer is eventually one of the objects required for the homework of uh, Money Wangling. It also gives a nice, big, beefy 10% learning power boost, which is not too shabby in of itself. But it also costs 50,000 bucks. Compare that to the analog computer that's only 20,000 bucks. So 
In reality, you could just not build the analog computer and just build the supercomputer, and that would fulfill the room conditions. If you're starting off in a game and you do not have a lot of money, you do not need to start off with a supercomputer. By all means, go with an analog computer just to fulfill the room conditions. Once you've got enough cash, then you can sell that and swap it in for the supercomputer. But ultimately, you don't need to buy both an analog computer and a supercomputer. One, only one is needed, and ultimately, at the end of the day, the Poshos will want the supercomputer. Same deal goes with the consoles. The, the thing here says analog console, and yeah, if you want to cheap out on it, you can do that. But eventually, the Poshos are going to need the super console to do a, an assignment for that. Not right off the bat. The game mercifully holds off on asking for the more expensive objects until a couple of years in before they start asking you for that. So uh, just like with the analog computer, you can do the analog console for now and then swap it in for the super. But the super console does have another learning power boost. Lastly, they are going to want super monitors. That's not a room requirement, so you don't need any other monitors, but the super monitor and the super server are the last of the objects in the computer room needed by the Poshos. So all of the other ancillary things are not really required, which is kind of odd. You'd think the Poshos would want a plotter or like, like a stock ticker machine, but that's not on the cards. They, these A room with these objects in it will be all you need for the Poshos. And of course you want to decorate it, get it, get its prestige up. Now, later in the game when you are lousy with money, buy all means get yourself additional copies of these objects especially the supercomputers because uh, well up to three because the learning bonuses stack yeah that gives that will send your learning rate into this room into the stratosphere but again only when you have the money to do that. Same goes with the super servers and the super consoles. So the Poshos like it when you stack lots of expensive and stat boosting things, but you only need one of each uh, at the end of the day. The other items that you need for the Poshos, having a library is definitely in the uh, in the cards here. For the bookcases, they actually require two different bookcases. One, the an internet history bookcase. Even though they themselves are not an internet history class, they do occasionally get assignments for internet history bookcase. There is also a money wangling one, so you might as well build both. Both of them give your library a 5% learning speed boost anyway. And then for the lecture hall, you can go with the standard lecture hall. Nothing special needed there. My revised deafening lecture hall would do the trick just fine. Oh, one other thing. I'm just going to pick up a, a class here at random just to show things off. So one thing that you can do to try and get the scheduler to keep your money wangling classes nice and ordered, you know, six slots, six lectures, six slots, six lectures, is to make sure that you basically designate a single lecture hall and a single computer lab as just the money wangling and turn off any other subjects you have for that so that the auto scheduler at least gets the suggestion to not try to schedule other classes in here and cause schedule disruptions where it asks for extra buildings or extra teachers when really you don't really need it. Now, let's talk about the Poshos themselves and why they are so good for the early game. Allow me to demonstrate. So the positive trait on the Posho is called Big Tipper occasionally donates money. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means a couple of very, very good things for a young school. I know we're not playing a young school here, but bear with me. So one of the things is that every time they gain a level in their class, they give you 200 bucks every single level. This is actually kind of like upper etching, where in the in that scenario, every student gave you $2,000 and it was everybody, not just the Poshos. But here you get 200 bucks for every single level. So that's where I was saying by boosting your learning rate with them, that gives them more XP, that gives them more levels, and that gives you more money. The reading club is really good with the Poshos as well, because again, boosts their learning rate, gives you more money. So you want to obviously increase the effectiveness of your class because it financially rewards you more so than just the XP bonus. Keep in mind, they give you the full XP bonus at the end of the month, just like every other student. But here, the levels give you big, big money. There's also what I was talking about, fully self-contained. So in this particular school, Lecture Theater 1 is poshos only, money wangling only. And as you can see, we have a 16 student per year class, 32 in total. We've got full Lecture Theater 1 taken up 
and full computer lab one taken up and that's it. Nowhere else on the calendar do the Pashos show up or take up space and they have not demanded any other rooms. They just sit there, learn, and make us money. The other aspect of the Big Tipper trait is they also pay you when you fulfill their personal wants. Any personal wants, even if it's a personal want that spins up for an object that you already have, if they go and fulfill it, guess what? You're getting 500 bucks out of that every single time. In addition to the accomplished happy buff that you get naturally from fulfilling personal wants. So yeah, the Pashos are a great early game class to have to get the rest of your campus financially off the ground. Not to mention, it, since it's self-contained, you can pretty much go in any direction. You know, even though they use a computer room, you don't have to go with other computer room subjects if you don't want to. In fact, this in this particular campus, this is the only class that uses the computer room and there's no wasted space in it. So, you know, do what you want to. This just gives you the money to get what you want. As you can see, it works quite well. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Let me know what classes you want me to do next for my deep dive series, and I will do the research and present them to you. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!